Now, what is the minimum force required to lift an object of say mass 1 kilogram resting on a floor? Now, look at this mass. This remains at rest. So, when a mass remains at rest, so you can conclude that the net force that is summation of all the forces acting on it is equal to 0. So, when you say net force is 0, what does it mean? So, you are actually equating or you are just saying that the vertical forces and the horizontal forces balance each other. So, when they balance, the object can remain at rest or it can move with a constant velocity. Now, here it is clearly given the object is at rest. So, now and I can see that there is no horizontal forces acting on the object, but there do exist a vertical force. Now, what is that vertical force? So, we have the force due to gravity which is acting downwards which you can write it as m times g. So, this is the weight of the object so which is mg and what is this weight? This is equal to m is 1 kilogram and you can take the value of g to be say approximately 10 meter per second squared. So, therefore, this will be 10 newton. So, a 1 kilogram object is going to exert a weight of 10 newton. Now, since the object remains at rest, this force will be balanced by another force and that is going to be exerted by the floor on the object. Now, this force which I am going to draw here should also be 10 Newton. So, this is another 10 Newton force. Now, you can look at these two forces, they balance each other and the object remains at rest. Now, the question here is, how much force should I exert on this object? in order to lift it. So, how much force should I exert on this object in order to lift it? Let me take a very simple example. If I exert a force of 2 Newton, an additional force of 2 Newton upwards, can I lift the object? Now, looking at the diagram, if you look at the diagram, you can see that there is a 10 Newton force acting downwards and you have a 10 Newton force acting upwards, I am exerting an additional force of 2 Newton. Now, will this object start raising up? Now, in that case, if you think, okay, this, these are unbalanced forces, therefore, they, it has to move upwards. Now, think of this. I am sitting on a chair and if someone has to lift me, now say my mass is 70 kilograms. Now, if you want to lift me, what is that minimum force you need to apply in order to lift me. So, when you exert a force of say just 2 Newton upwards, is that sufficient to lift me? Because when I say 70 kilogram, you can just imagine something like this. There is a 70 kilogram object sitting on this chair and the downward force that is the weight acting on this object is going to be mg which is 700 Newton. And since I am at rest, the floor will also exert the same force on me. So, that will be another 700 Newton acting upwards. So, since the force is balanced, I am not moving. Now, if you exert an additional force of 2 Newton or say 10 Newton upwards, will I start moving? Now, this will give you a better idea, right? So, you know that you cannot lift an object which weighs 700 Newton just by applying a 10 Newton or 2 Newton force. So, what happens to this 2 Newton force here? Now, let us come back to this question. Now, I have 1 kg mass. Now, when you apply this 2 Newton, what exactly happens here? Now, let us explore what happens to all these forces. Now, all you need to do is draw a free body diagram. So, when I say free body diagram, isolate this mass and then try to draw all the forces acting on the mass and on the surface. Now, let us do that. So, let me first isolate this mass. So, I have a mass of 1 kilogram here. So, this is 1 kg and I will draw the surface somewhere here. Fine. Now, what happens is, imagine this is earth's surface. So, now the earth is pulling this mass downwards with a force mg. So, this earth exerts a force of mg here and that is equal to 10 Newton. Now, let me call this force as 
action force. See, action and reaction are two terms which you can interchange. So don't get confused with this term action and reaction. Okay. So let me call it as action 1. So I'm just giving a suffix there 1 just to pair the forces. Now where is your reaction force? This mass will exert the same force on the earth and then it will try to pull the earth towards itself. So that is going to act like this. And that force is also 10 Newton. I will call this as a reaction force. Now you can interchange these two terms action and reaction because they are mutual and they act simultaneously. So when you when you introduce these terms action and reaction there is a slight misconception happening. The misconception is you tend to understand that action is number one and reaction is number two. So since you exerted a force the other object is exerting a force. It's not like that. Both of you exert forces simultaneously and it is mutual. So therefore, don't get confused with those words. Because I'm just using those words because in almost all the textbooks, they use the same words. Let me clearly explain what it is. Now the next point here is, now you can clearly see that, okay, a 10 Newton force is pulling that mass downwards and that mass is exerting the same force on the earth. Now what happens when you place the mass on that surface? So when you place the mass on that surface, this 10 Newton force is going to press this floor with the same force 10 Newton. You call this as a pressing force. I will name this as a pressing force. Now a pressing force has a property. Now this force arises due to contact. So if this mass is somewhere hanging somewhere in space, it is not going to press any floor. It's not on any, it's not in contact with any surface, therefore it is not going to press any surface. So it presses due to contact, therefore you name this as a contact force. So this pressing force is called as a contact force. And this force has a property, the pressing force, that is the contact force, is perpendicular to surface of contact. Therefore, you add a word normal to it. So any force which is perpendicular, you can just simply say it is a normal contact force generally written in terms of N. Okay. Now if I call this as action 2, so this arises due to contact. Now the reaction of this force, that is this object is pressing the floor with 10 Newton. Therefore, the floor is going to press the object in the opposite direction with the same force 10 Newton and that is what we are going to draw it here. Now, I call that as reaction 2. Now, what happens in many cases is we don't look at what is happening on the floor. You are looking at only the mass and then writing it as action and reaction. But now you can understand why I added that suffix there action 1 and reaction 2 are not of the same pair. They are not action and reaction of the same pair. So they are of different pairs. Okay. So now I can clearly see what is happening here. So when I exert an external force of 2 Newton on the object upwards, the pressing force that is the 10 Newton reduces by 2 Newton. So what will happen here? This force that is, I'm, I'll draw it here, this pressing force will become 8 Newton and therefore its reaction. So action 2 becomes 8 Newton and therefore the reaction 2 also will become 8 Newton. So therefore this will not be 10, that will, that will change to 8 Newton. So this is a self-adjusting force. So you call that as the normal reaction force. So this reaction here is now named as the normal reaction force which we normally represent it as N and in some cases they write it as R. So I prefer writing it as N. Since it is normal, it's perpendicular to the surface of contact, I prefer writing it as N. So now you can see what is, now you just forget about this pressing force here. Okay. Now what is the net force acting on the object? It's still 0. You have 10 Newton acting downwards and it is 2 plus 8. 10 Newton acting upwards. Still the 
force is balanced so object will remain at rest now what happens if you exert a force of instead of 2 newton say for example you exert a force of 8 newton now when you exert a force external force of 8 newton upwards the pressing force will reduce by 8 newton so therefore the pressing force should become 2 newton from 10 newton it should become 2 newton and what will happen is its reaction will also become 2 newton now again you can see the forces are balancing each other the object will not move if I exert an external force of 10 newton now what happens now you can see when you exert a force of 10 newton the pressing force has to reduce by 10 newton so if it reduces by 10 newton what happens to pressing force becomes zero so when that becomes zero now you say there is no pressing force at all now the normal contact force is zero it means that the object has just left contact but it is ready to move now it's still not moving the upward force is still 10 newton the downward force is 10 newton but the object is not moving the object has just left contact it's in the microscopic level it has just left contact now it is ready to move now when you apply a force slightly greater than 10 newton it will start moving it will start accelerating because now there is a net force now say for example let me not take the decimal values let me take say 11 newton now when i exert a force of 11 newton now there is no contact it has left contact already now it moves upwards it's accelerating upwards with a net force of 1 newton now what is the net force upward force is 11 newton the downward force is 10 newton and therefore it will have a net force of 1 newton acting upwards so therefore this mass i'll write it like f is equal to this mass times acceleration so therefore f stands for f net so you need to understand this so this is f net this is your total mass and this a stands for acceleration of center of mass now here this expression clearly tells me f net is 1 newton and this mass is 1 kilogram it's going to accelerate with some acceleration you can find out what that acceleration is is that clear so if you want to lift an object of some mass you need to exert a force slightly greater than the weight of the object